Hi everyone. I'm Jen Liddy of Jen Liddy Coaching and Development, and I wanted to welcome you to this video today. Today I'm interviewing Trisha Kaya. She's a special ed teacher, and she's been a teacher for 20 years. She's going into her 20th year this year. And her story is special because she's had an idea that she's wanted to bring to life for nine years now. And things kept getting in the way, including uh, she has four children. Three of them have autism. She was a single mom who got remarried. She moved houses and uh, she battled breast cancer. And so those are really good reasons why somebody would not bring their idea to life. And you can understand that. But it still nagged at her. And she actually took the time this past spring and summer to really make it come to life. And her story is a really inspiring one. And I want you to know that Trisha did this. She brought her idea to life, and I want you to hear her story today. I want you to hear how she did it. She tells you exactly what she did. And I think it's inspiring. And if anybody couldn't have done this or shouldn't have done this or had a great excuse, it's Trisha. And so if she can do it, anybody can do it. So I'd like to introduce you to Trisha Kaya, and please welcome her and watch her story. Thanks. Thank you so much for giving me your time today. I really appreciate it because I think your story can really inspire and help other creative women who maybe don't see themselves as creative or don't see themselves as entrepreneurs and their everyday life is like, hmm, this is maybe as good as it gets. And I think that your story is a rather inspiring one. So thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. So can you tell us what Blackboard Brave is, how you describe it to people? Sure. Um, Blackboard Brave is a self-development program that basically helps connect um, teens, teachers, and parents. And what I mean by that is it can be um, a program that is specifically teaching teens how to communicate more effectively amongst themselves. It can be a program that is teaching um, parents how to navigate the wild, wild west of new parenting in the new century. It can also be a program to help put teachers back in their heart and really understand um, how to create safe space classrooms classrooms where um, students are able to take risks and thrive um, emotionally, socially, and educationally. So I want to ask you a few questions about how you did this very hard thing of bringing your idea to life. And the first thing I want to know is why is bringing it to life so important for you? Why do you want this so badly? Mm. <laughs> I think it's because Every time I try to put it to rest, like every time I try to, to pack it away and say, no, 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 you don't need this. No, no, no. You know, this, it's not that big of a deal. Just, it was a great idea, but it didn't pan out. Just, just put it away. Every time I did that, I was reminded of why I needed to do the work. You know, a student will come to me and would be under tremendous stress and pressure and they didn't have a, a set of tools to release that pressure mm -hmm. or a parent will come up to me very distraught about you know not being able to effectively communicate with their teen and then I would coach them a little bit and bam magic would happen so I'm like how can I not bring this into the world yes and so I, selfishly I, I wanted to pack it away because it was the easy thing to do but then over and over again, I, I would be presented with a situation in which my tools really help somebody and I realized that they were valuable and they needed to be brought into the world. Yes, I say that God had me on redial. Like I, he kept calling and calling and I kept saying, no, 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 not yet, not yet. So, you know, stop, stop. I'm okay. I don't need this. But the world needs it. The world needs it. So, and I'm just the, the, the tool, the vessel to bring it forth. When you were shoving it down and hiding from it, um, what troubling, painful, or destructive thoughts or feelings did you battle? Um, I felt like a failure in some aspects, but then I would always try to like smooth that out and say, oh, come on, you're a teacher. Come on, you've got four kids who need you. Come on, you're, you're trying to sell your house or come on now, you know, you're, you're on a weight loss program, you know, that's more important right now, or, um, or you're battling cancer right now, you don't have time for this. So all of this, you know, it was just like one thing after another, just like, I, I could create lots of excuses why not to do it. But in the meantime, it was a nagging feeling in the back of my head. Mm -hmm. um, and when I would deal with, like I said, when I would deal with a colleague in distress, or when I would see kids, 
you know, at each other's throats. And if they just had some better tools, it would be a better environment for everybody. And I would notice that even in my own classroom, because I was using the tools, you know, people would be like, why is that kid acting like that in your room and is, you know, raising holy hell in my room? And I was just like, well, <laughs> this is how. So again, I guess I, I felt in some ways guilty that I was <laughs> keeping it from other people. Um, and in some ways I, I think that manifested itself in my world by overeating mm -hmm. or watching too much television or becoming obsessive compulsive about something, whether it was organizing or cleaning or working out or whatever it might have been, or all of a sudden I needed to be a good cook, you know, and I hate cooking. So it was, and that's what I was doing. I was creating busy work for myself in order to press it down. So you, you knew that if you would just take, you were busy, right? Oh, I have cancer. Oh, I have four kids. Oh, I have a full-time job. Oh, I'm selling my house. Like you were busy, but you found time to do overeating. You found time to do over-organizing or overcooking or overworking probably at your job sometimes. Yeah. So it's really, this is such a great insight for you to have because you know that when you want to avoid something, you tend to overdo something else. Most of us do that. And you had plenty of time to watch Dr. Phil, right? I did. I became a crazy obsessive compulsive Dr. Phil fan over the summer. I don't know why. I don't know why. But here's the thing. It's research. I always said to myself, no, you're doing research because he has so many people on his show with crazy teens, right? And so I'm, a, I'm the teen lady too. I, I'm just kind of taking notes. Yeah. That's it's such a good myself. insight to have. <laughs> I love that. So what tools kind of kicked you in the ass? Like how did you keep going when you felt scared and when you could see that you were hiding or buffering? Like, so even though you were scared, how did you keep going? Um, I think for the, for me anyway, I, I need somebody who knows what I'm trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was you, like uh -huh. you, you knew what I was trying to accomplish and I kept showing up, you know, I kept showing up um, for our program every week. You did. I kept showing up on our private Facebook page, you know, with questions or comments or struggles. And I just kept showing up and moving forward. And I didn't, I think I didn't really allow myself to completely shut down because I had a group of women who were trying to uh, accomplish a goal in business. And I also had a coach who had some great tools. And for me, I, that's what I need. I need people in my life who are going to keep pushing me forward or asking me good questions or encouraging me to keep going. You were, you had very low times. You had low times of productivity. You had low times of self-esteem, but you also had very high times too of productivity and self-esteem. And at, at any time you had a win, you showed up in the group, but also anytime you were feeling low, you showed up. And I think that's where a lot of entrepreneurs get lost. You know, they don't ask for the help that's right in front of them. And you, I love to say it this way, you used the shit out of me. And I <laughs> love that you did that. You used the shit out of the group. You, you used the shit out of your colleagues in the group. And and that's why you're here today on my success story, because you really made some shit happen that for nine years you couldn't make happen. Um, what did you have to give up to actually do the things you accomplished? And I would love for you to talk here a little bit about what you actually made happen. Sure. Um, I, I actually accomplished a lot in a very short period of time, um, which still amazes me. But um, the things I accomplished while in the solo entrepreneur class is I had a logo designed for my business. I created business cards with the help of um, Sarah, I don't know how to say her last Ashman, name. Sarah Ashman, that's right. Um, she created my logo and my business cards, um, my Facebook banner. Um, I created a Facebook business page. I created a website with the help of students. Mm -hmm. um, I actually tapped into a resource at school because I had no idea how to create a website and I didn't really have the money to invest in a professional to create it for me. So I had a student do it for a class project. Mm -hmm. And once she uh, created the, the backbone for it, I was able to go in and edit it and like tune it up. But I mean, wow, that was like 
amazing to me that a student actually got to do a website and then watch it go live. That was pretty exciting for her too. Yeah. Um, I also um, did a keynote address um, in speaking with parents about communication with their teens. You I have a workshop. I designed a workshop. Yes, um, it's just it needs to be kicked forward into motion. Yep. Um, and I started talking about my business as if it was a legitimate business. That you know, I'm no longer hiding it in the shadows of oh, here's this thing I kind of want to do, but I don't want to do it. And, you know what I mean? Yes. So I started actually talking to people about it. I did some target market interviews, which actually put the idea out there. And it allowed me to fine tune some of my ideas. And then I found out real quickly that doing these target market interviews with both teachers and administrators and a few parents, um, that my work is definitely wanted and needed. You know, that's what the overall message I got, that it's wanted and needed and practical and people want to see it. So that was really um validating for me that I'm on the right path and I'm doing the right thing that I should keep moving forward. The thing I needed to let go of in order to make all of this happen is my need to do everything, to manage every little detail of my life, my children's lives. And so really early on, I had to tell my kids, I need your support. And this is how you're going to give it to me. <laughs> you know, you're all old enough. You're going to do your own laundry now. Yeah. Wow. That freed up so much time in my life by giving them the responsibility of doing their laundry. I also told my husband I needed his support. You know, when we have classes on Thursdays, I need him to do all the dinner and prep work and clean up. And he did. He did it very happily. And then I also hired a cleaning lady mm -hmm. because I wanted to devote time to uh, working on the business and not maintaining my big Victorian home. Mm -hmm. And so these are the things that I had to put into place in order to free up some time to do the work I said I wanted to do. Mostly I hear you saying you, you asked for help. You mm -hmm. were very clear with your expectations and needs. Uh, you invested both time, energy, and money and I think that that's a place where a lot of solopreneurs will fall down is they'll say, oh, I don't, I don't want to spend time on it or I don't want it to take up all of my time or they'll say, I don't want to invest money. And I know for myself, and I think you would agree based on the conversations we've had, the minute that I invest money in something, everything shifts. It becomes much more real and like mm -hmm. I have a real stake in the outcome. Did you, did you have that experience? with Yes. Money? And it's funny because the very first, uh, item I invested money in was a laptop computer. I didn't have a computer at home. Mm -hmm. And I was sweating bullets buying this computer, like literally sweating as I'm like putting the money down to buy it. And then once I walked out of the store, I said, now I'm in business. Yes. Like it was just that simple. Like now I'm in business. Yes. Um, and from that point on, yeah, I was investing money, but each time I invested money, whether it was professional headshots mm -hmm. or business cards or a logo or for coaching, I was like, All right, these are tools you need for business. If you want to accomplish this thing, you say that's important to you. You've got to put in not only time, but you've got to invest some money in it too. Yes. That's what kind of makes it real. So what do you wish you had known um, or wish you had believed as you, um, as you went through the process and now that you're on the other side and you're kind of in a different space and you see yourself as a different person, you see yourself as a solopreneur, you see yourself as a thought leader, you see potential that you couldn't have seen five months ago. Um, what's one thing that you wished you had believed then that you believe now about yourself? That my ideas are valuable. Mm -hmm. that I, I have um, value and that um, they deserve to be out in the world and they need to be out in the world. Yeah. So it's going to, I believe it's going there. My ideas can heal the world. Oh, you know? so and I, I tell that to my students all the time when we're creating a safe space. I said, I don't have the power to end world hunger or to stop all the violence in the world, but I do have an opportunity to change the vibration and the energy in this room by the way we interact with each other. And I believe that that will trickle down the hallway and out into the rest of the school and then leak out into the community and it's going to become the foundation for your future families. And that's what's gonna create a more peaceful world, but it starts here in this little classroom. 
Do you think that because you didn't think that your ideas were special, that, that, that that's what kept you, that that's what kept it in your head for so long that, that you didn't, yeah, I didn't think my ideas were not only special, but I didn't think, I thought every idea I had had to be original. Yes. You know, that I had to create all this crazy content and it all had to be original. And I realized pretty early on, well, not maybe really early on, but I realized through interacting with you and other entrepreneurs that we're always borrowing each other's shit. Yes. And that there is no necessarily original thought. We just put our own spin on it. And so I, whatever I do is going to have, you know, Trisha Kaya's flavor that's right. It. It's, and it's my special sauce. And um, yeah, so it's okay. How will the world be a better place when your workshops are out in the world? Um, the world will be a better place because people will have some just basic communication tools in which they're going to be able to have a thoughtful conversation with their spouse, with their child, with their student, with a colleague. And I, I firmly believe that, you know, by creating a real positive communication space, that that, like I said, it goes out into the community and it goes out into families and it, we're creating sort of a new foundation for our schools, for our families, for our communities. And I, I think that needs to happen. We've definitely lost something in the last century um, with all of the technology that's been born. We've lost some key communication, even though it's supposed to bring us closer together. Yeah. I think in many ways it's torn us apart. And so we need new tools. Um, it's a new millennia and you need some new tools in to communicate with your team with your team to communicate with your colleague to communicate in your family structure what advice would you give other creatives whose ideas remain stuck in their head because i talked to a lot of women who were where you were before mm -hmm. what advice would you give these women if you could take a step forward take a step forward and don't worry about the how mm -hmm. just move forward um the house will be answered along your way and people will come into your space because you decided to move forward. People you didn't even know will come into your space and offer you a hand to bring you through those dark times. Um, they always show up. So just believe that it's possible and take a step and then take another and another. They don't have to be big steps, but all those little steps will you know, hopefully lead you to your 100% at some point. Yeah. And I, I'm still not there yet, that's for sure. But I'm keeping moving forward. Um, and for me, moving forward always means I have to have support team around me. And it's especially for me, that means I have to hire a coach. Mm -hmm. And that is you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very blessed and honored to have you. I want people to understand that your advice for you to say that is huge because your biggest paralysis point was that you didn't know how. Right. And that you couldn't see, you were pissed off that you couldn't see the whole path. Right. And for you to say that that's your piece of advice means that you have evolved to a new level where you understand that when you take a step forward, you're not the same person anymore. So even if you were on the path the whole way that you had created, you're not the same person on that path anymore. You, are, you, you evolve every single time you take a step and the path changes. So I, th I really want people to understand how important that advice is coming from you specifically, Trish. Thank you. So the last thing I would love to know is um, how can people find you? How can they use you? How can they learn from you? Well, you can find me. I have a, I have a, a website. Um, it's uh, blackboardbrave.com. I also have um, a Facebook page, Blackboard Brave. And um, I have my private Facebook pa page, Trisha Kaya. Um, so probably those are the best ways to reach me are through the Facebook page or through my website. Mm -hmm. And you can take a look at some of the content that I offer. Some of, and um, you know, we you could also give me a call and we can chat and figure out um, how I can best serve you, your community, your family, your business. Do you um, create workshops for people 
um, based on what they want or do you have kind of plug and play workshops or do you do a little bit of both? I do a little bit of both. I definitely have a workshop that I can offer, um, whether it's to teens, to a parent group, to teachers. Um, it's a little bit different depending on the audience, mm -hmm. um, but I can also fine tune it to your needs as well. Great. Well, I want to express publicly how proud I am of you. And I know, I don't think anybody could see because when you were talking, the camera is on you, but like, it makes me tear up when I hear the work that you're doing in the world because it's so needed. But it also makes me tear up because I know how stuck you were and how long you were stuck for. But I also know like all the shit that you've been through and you did it anyway. And I feel like if you can do it, anybody can do this. <laughs> If a woman with four kids, how many of your children have autism? Two? Three. Three, oh, three of, them. of her four children have autism. Um, so she's got special needs kids. She works with special needs kids all day. She had cancer. She's been single mom. She's been remarried mom. She's been moving houses mom. Like if this woman can do it, you can do it. So I really want, I really wanted your face and name to be out there so that you can inspire other women to do this work. Yay. I'm so proud of you, Trish. Thank, Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. This was fun. Yeah. Um, so if you are interested in connecting with Trisha, her information will be uh, available to you either in the comments or on the post. And she would love to hear from you. She's, she's very open to chatting. I know her personally. She's very uh, approachable. And she's a real thought leader in this arena of teen communication, parent to teen communication, teacher to parent, teacher to teen communication. And so if you are anybody in that group and you're looking for help, this is the woman who can really work with you. So I hope people reach out. Thanks, Trisha. Thank you. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.